All right, guys. So we just had to go pick up a new camshaft retainer uh, plate. We're getting ready here. We're going to stage three uh, BTR, 630, 615. Um, we're going to go ahead and get this thing installed. For us to put off or on the new pulley and everything for the timing chain, you actually have to press this off. We didn't think about it when we were, before we put the crankshaft in. So I have a bearing separator with a little puller. I leave the bolt on there. Doesn't really matter. And it just works it right off. But it doesn't matter if you do it before or after. Yeah, it helps if you have this tool to do it after, but it happens, and it's loose. All right, guys, so we went with the JP Performance uh, billet gear set. Uh, if you do order from Brian Tooley, they're going to highly recommend this set. They have the uh, zero plus, our cam is done to greed, so it's already got the set set up. So we're just going to put the zero in and we're going to have to back this crankshaft where it actually fits. Just slides in. We did do a little bit of scotch brite pad and cleaned up this. And this doesn't look like it matters. Like that. Set your chain on. Where's our nice new bolts? The old bolts. You gotta grab them. We'll turn it and get in line. Set it on that chain. We're on on the bottom. Mm -hmm. line Look up. for your nipple. Got it. Get one down just a little bit. Right there. Should be pretty good right there. And we need to turn. Okay. Uh -huh. It's actually pretty good right there. All right, so we did the uh, Melling 10295 oil pump high performance. Um, get the high flow. We did see in here they actually do have some springs to get plus 25 psi if you really want to send it. But we're gonna run what's in it. All right, went ahead and got the front cover on. I'm gonna go ahead and torque it down to 18. All right, so we have went ahead and got our Holly uh, lowering oil pan. So if you guys got a lower truck, this is the one they recommend. I'll throw a part number up for you. We went ahead and got our screen pickup in. We got our gasket ready. Everything snug down. Don't forget to dab here. Usually where all your mating surfaces hit, we don't have the back on because we're just gonna slide it through, but same difference. All right. Tiny Tank Taylor lining it up right now. If, and, you, do, if you do pull off your uh, original uh, pull pan and you have rivets holding it on, little holes right here and here, 
Oh, that means you have the original gasket on there. Please change it. I would also like to know <laughs> if you do new gaskets, which you should, please make sure you get orange RTV. It makes me happy. What was that tiny tank? I'm good with it. Says the guy who needs my head gasket. And another orange motor. All right, guys, so we're back over here at the shop today. Been on a cruise this morning, but we are back. Um, we went ahead and cleaned everything up. We've got our LS9 head gaskets on, uh, new dowels in, and then I've got a little surprise here. I had some 243 heads worked, shaved, and bigger valves uh, with Wilkes Performance down in Alabama, and we're getting ready to throw those on. All right, here we are with the new Wilkes heads. 243s, um, they have been shaved down, 20 thousandths. Completely stuck. Um, ported, polished, five angle valve job. Yeah, completely stock. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we roll. There's some other things done. I'll, I'll probably pop it in the uh, description of what all we did, but yeah, they look super great. I love the little extra embossing. You'll notice how even when they clean them, got a like a matte, dull clean and then we'll, the polish we'll set the gaskets on and take a picture of the ports how big they are when we get done with this all right we've got both of the heads on and it looks pretty good if i do say most so myself um just to add to that i did arp bolts um probably didn't have to on this but i wanted to go ahead since we were going to have some power it's not boosted so boosted you want to do the studs yeah, so if we end up doing boost down the road, we'll have to pull this all apart anyway. It does have a battery symbol. It's a hybrid. It's a hybrid. Look at that. So we're trying to look out for the environment with this one. Yep. What we're going to do is we're actually going to use the rest of the fossil fuels up. Yep. Get so. them all out of the way for the other ones. Here's the bag. And we're starting to bring the fun stuff. Uh, where we left you guys, we had the heads on, got it torqued down. And I decided to go ahead and set the MSD Atomic Air Force 103. See if there's any space underneath. <laughs> and there's all sorts of room. You see the light through there? I'm trying to find out if my Earl's steam vents are going to work, and it's uh, probably not. But we're going to try it. We're going to try it. The good thing is it does sit up a little bit, so there is some room here. Uh, same in the back, and I would like to have all four corners, but all you really need is the front. So, game time decision. The good thing is on this, I'll go ahead and tell you guys, and we'll probably talk more about this intake because I can't find a lot about doing this swap uh, online. The problem I see everybody online is on the cars. They're hitting the firewall with this and everything, and the square, we got the adjustable dirty dingoes, so we should have some room to play with. Um, obviously, we would like to set it back as far as possible, but I, what I like about it is this intake, you know, in the squares, this LS sit way down. It should sit up a little more. Yeah. So, what's your thoughts on it, Josh? It's going together pretty good. So far, we're yep. going pretty good. Uh, the next issue is I'm going to be running the high mount Holly setup, which is great, but with the water pump situation, it's going to be tight so we got to figure out which one to run um we'll get there so we're going to go ahead and start with push rods um because of the ls9 head gaskets and then shaving 20 thousandths i actually got back to almost stock so i'm running chromoly hardened 7.4s which are stock size uh, so 
took a little of the guesswork out there. So we'll go ahead and start with those. Got a box, nice shiny. We've done been the uh, Trunnion rebuild. These are actually LS7 rockers. Uh, I think if you do anything past a 540 lift, you really need to do this. Really? Because they tell you 600. Eh, safety first. You don't want this to be the reason why you screwed up a really expensive engine. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we always, just out of habit, this rub smooth on this. I always set a little bit of assembly lube down through there. And we already have our little plates right set here. up. Yep, just on the tip. Just the tip, but listen to your happy Gilmore. All right, let's show you how to set one of these up real quick. Uh, round side goes down, sets in here. It just kind of hugs it. That one's up, so that one's on lift. like it and go all the way down. All right, I went ahead and set the valve cover um, Holly two piece on here just to get a sneak peek. And that's that's, tell that's them a good about the coals. Yeah, that's a good look. Coal covers. Yeah. So these are meant to look like a small block. Yeah. So Holly makes these two piece, and uh, I've got the cover on right here. You pull them off, your coils fit right here. Um, the biggest complaint on these is you have to pull your coal boots off to get the oil to get to pull them off to get to your oil, fill oil. Uh, Stephanie's the last truck we did, we actually trimmed this where we could straight get, down get it straight off because you can't see it. Uh, sorry, Holly, but it happens. Hey, but if that's what's keeping you guys from ordering this, I recommend it because when I had to fill hers up, literally all I do. Just undo these four little bolts right here. I believe they're a seven millimeter. And they're aluminum, they're not gonna rust. Looks great, and everybody also, the comment is, all the coils get hot. Well, it was 90 degrees and we drove it a thousand miles and that wasn't the problem. Yeah. So, I will say the other option, if you don't wanna do that, no, that's not gonna be running this intake, but if you're running a fiberglass intake or something that's got some room, I do see guys throw the valley plate in here that's got the old school oil fill. That'd be cool too but not gonna work on this application. No, it's tight, tight and right. But uh, yes, and before anybody says it, I know these aren't gonna be red, it's gonna be orange, but they don't make it orange, so we're gonna have to fab it up. But I love the way it's looking. Very 80s. Here's Jameson once again trying to strip the bolts out of my brand new heads. No, just snug, don't go any past. All right, what's going on, Josh? Uh, we did not put the rear main seal on yet because we stand. didn't want to take the stand up. Uh, you can slide them out on in. It's not that bad. So we're going to take the stand off. We just had the intake sitting on there to keep everything out. I want to point out we, my great tape we, we job here. taped it. Look at my as side. As we'll see over here. It looks a lot better over there. <laughs> There's always that one guy. Always that one guy. So we're gonna take that off, do that, make sure we're all sealed up, put the uh, crank sensor and cam sensor where we ain't getting no more dust in this thing. And we're pretty well there. It's buttoned cool. for the most part. And then we're gonna pull the rear end, set it up on some really sketchy uh, plastic Harbor Freight. Nope, those they are from Northern. Oh, they're northern. Oh, we're fine. They said they're rated for 700 pounds. I splurged. We're going to set the uh, rear end on it and uh, pull all the bearings out, 
Uh, we're still get, waiting on the yoke, but we can put the outside bearings in and the races in for the rear end. So, cool. we're there. Also, I can't remember if I showed this yet, but the boys and I decided we were going to get this clean. Uh, instead of hand sanding this time, we... Uh, we sanded. Yeah, Josh bought a... Uh, what do you want to call that? Yeah. Sandblaster for the... It's called wet sandblasting. It's where you hook it up to a pressure washer. It's about a hundred bucks on Amazon. Uh, it actually worked pretty well. Yeah, it. Act, I mean, I don't know if you can pick this up on camera, but like, I didn't scrub on this thing at all. And it yeah. looked good. And then Taylor and I, we uh, coated this thing down. When you do it, it flash rusts. So we hit it with some uh, acid that pretty much kills the rust. Let it sit overnight and dry. I think Taylor hit it with a wire wheel and we painted it. It turned out really nice. We didn't try on the rear cover because it's getting replaced, but the rest looks really good. Yeah. Well, you can look down in the crevices here. I mean, it's, it's clean. It clean. So, I highly recommend that. What in the redneck hell? So, he's making fun of me. It's happening right here. And he's using my nice fabric tape, too. Well, we're out of the regular tape. What is happening here? Pure genius. Pure genius. Inexpensive. The 12 bolt had a special shake with quality rust. Get the drill, Jim. Yeah, I can't find the drill. Where's the light? Did we put the light up? Probably. All right, to update, we've got our outer uh, bearings in. So um, pinion load. Trying to get the pinion load. Uh, Josh, where's the breaker bar that got broke? Uh, it is here. That's a half inch drive for you people at home. Yeah. Uh, there's no directions when you do a uh, solid, uh, what is that called? We did a crush it's sleeve delete. Pretty much a crush sleeve delete. There's no directions that came with it. So we're trying to tie it down and we're at like 10 uh, inch pounds of force to move it, eight. And uh, we've hit the limit and uh, broke the torque or broke the breaker bar but uh we found on a forum that somebody actually that's done this a few times to take it out shave down the it's pretty much as just a solid tube instead of a crush sleeve or if you build too much torque you don't actually crush the crush sleeve and mess up your preload on your bearing so we're gonna take it out, shave about five thousandths off of it. Most of the shims are two thousandths, or shave off you know a quarter thousand or quarter of that, and put it back in. See if it gets a little bit better. Get nope. some six hundred grit sandpaper, four hundred. Shave off a little bit of the thing, make the difference. Also for you at home, be careful on your yokes. They're not made in America anymore. Certain brands. This is a Moser. <laughs> it is made in America. And also squared off, so it's really easy to get the wrench on. If you have a really big wrench, it's really good to hold it. Perfect. So, all right. So we finally got the yoke in here. Josh is throwing stuff. Throwing shit. And we need to uh, sand these off. We got the chunk here, the Yukon Posse. Always look over your stuff, get a little rust there, we'll file off and clean it back up. Probably where it was just sitting in there, but. Yeah, it's got a little water in it. From yeah, it got a little water. We cleaned it out really good. Should be fine. All right, we got the chunk in, all shimmed out. What do we got going on right here? We are just starting to get it all set up to check our backlash. Why does this matter? Because if it is too tight or too loose, well, too loose will make noise too, and do other damage. Too, uh, too tight when your gear gets hot, running down the road, then it gets uh, dangerous. So this is just our first try. But you kind of make sure you front stays. Looks like we're a little too loose because we want to be under ten thousandths and we're probably seventeen thousandths try one 
Okay, after eight times in and out, moving shims. Where are we at? Look like seven or eight to me. Yep, well, it looks like about seven. That's money. That's money. Perfect. Slid right in. I'm glad. You know what they say, eight times the charm. Yeah. We're there. Now we'll do uh, some paint and check our pattern. Make sure it's good. Should be good to go. Onward. Just paint a little happy diff. Why does everything become arts and crafts with you? He's just happy it's kind of orange. You know, Lily's been wanting to paint forever. Yeah, and I know. Here. Yeah, she's she's off. The one time. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> All right, goal of this is just to check your pattern. You want, you know, decent depth. You want it pretty much in the middle-ish. We'll roll it over a few times and look. I always keep a little bit of tension with my finger on this just to kind of make sure the pinion pushes on it pretty good. Get a little paintbrush. Little happy rear ends, that's what we're shooting for. Can you say that nowadays? I think so. Happy rear ends? I mean, everybody else is. Okay. You never know. Mm, is that leading or falling? That should be counter. Should be clockwise. See, we're looking pretty well in the middle. There to there. And it looks like it's not touching the bottom. It's a pretty good tooth. This kind of checks your pinion depth. Because if your pinion is too far in or too far out, it'll be on, down here or way up here and you'll have the face, which is your hard spot up here. Or if your setup is wrong and you're too far over, you'll be too deep. You'll be eating gears. Yep, and you'll be uh, not happy when it goes pop. All right. Good deal. Ready 12 for axles. Bolt, 12 bolt. <laughs>